the corpses walk in the tantric rituals. When somebody dies or when somebody is certified dead by your doctor, he's not completely dead. Up to five to seven minutes, it's behaving as if it's alive and then falls dead, exhausts itself. So it's based on this that when somebody dies, there are rituals in India. Up to fourteen days, there are various kinds of rituals. Once the body has been shed, once the legs have fallen, you cannot walk. Dead man cannot walk, isn't it? But that's not true. We can make them walk. The tantric sciences in India, this is their whole thing, to make a dead man walk. The corpses walk in the tantric rituals. There… there have been many but uh, one has been historically recorded. There was a yogi, there have been many like this, there still are. There was a yogi who was… Uh, who had mastered what is known as Surya Sparsh, that means hmm, Sparsh, hmm? Okay, touch, okay, contact or touch. So this is like the solar touch. There is a certain type of yoga called Surya Sparsh. So he mastered this. This was a, a bong. What's a bong? A Bengali. So uh, he lived in Varanasi and he periodically went to his guru and learnt different steps of this and was mastering this step by step. So any number of times he displayed this in public that if you bring a bird, a dead bird, which has been checked by everybody, it's a for sure a dead bird, not a bird which is acting dead, a really dead bird. If it died within the last three hours, it's gone rigid. You know, within three hours a bird goes stiff, the rigor mortis sets in for a bird much quicker than for a human body. Because uh, <laughs> a bird has… The, the blood temperature, the body temperature of a bird is much, much higher than that of a human body. So the way it cools down and how soon the rigor mortis sets in is much quicker in a bird's body than in a human body. So, three hours after the bird is dead, if you brought a bird to him with a simple magnifying glass, that too not from direct sunlight, from mirrored light. If you stand outside and mirror the sunlight inside, using that light through a magnifying glass, he would make the bird come alive. It would chirp, it would sit up, it would walk and it would fly. It would fly around for some time and then collapse and die again. So when people said, why can't you make it live? He said, this is all I know. My guru can make this happen. I am still learning. But he was already close to seventy years of age at that time. To his misfortune, it so happened, uh, a seven-year-old boy of the local uh, Islamic conquest had already happened. A Muslim king's son, who was seven years of age, died of some unexplained fever. So they had heard of this man bringing a bird alive. They came to him and said, come and try and our king's son. 
One thing was, he would never try it outside the presence of his deity. He had a small de a deity and a shrine. Outside the shrine, he would never try such a thing. He would practice it only in the shrine. He said, I will not do such things outside the view of my deity. They have no value for the deity because according to them it's idolatry. It's an energy form that he has created and with that he works. They said, this deity, goddammit, we'll take it. We'll take it to the palace. He said, no, no, it cannot be moved. He said, it can be moved. And they just picked it up. He cried, don't do this. And when they picked it up and uh, this was happening, they were trying to drag him, he said, I'm not going to come. I will not do it. I'm not going to do this. He got angry when they picked up the deity and taking it out like it's some kind of a toy. He said, I'm not going to bring your king's son to life. Even if I could, I cannot, but even if I could, I will not do it. Then they held him by the hair and dragged him to the king and he said, I'm not going to do it. So they butchered him right there. And in the process of doing all this, they dropped the deity and it broke. So he had a few disciples to whom he was imparting this. It died with them, everything. But this has been clearly recorded by very responsible people that actually any number of times he did this, that he would make a dead bird which is dead for over three hours to actually get up and fly for a substantial period of time, that is more than an hour's time. And he repeatedly said, my guru can make this bird live for its full length of life, whatever that is. And my guru can even do it to a human being. There have been any number of such people. There was another yogi in South India. So usually they don't… this is a kind of a fringe yogi, this bird yogi. <laughs> this is a fringe yogi, this is not the mainstream. This is a mainstream yogi. So people were coming to him for blessings and things were happening around him so much. He lived uh, in Karnataka, in south western Karnataka or south, somewhere near Kolegal. And uh, people were gathering around him. One day it so happened, a young boy who died, the parents brought this boy and cried their hearts out. So, he looked at their plight and probably he sensed that the boy need not have died, it's more accidental in nature. So he dipped his finger, there was a lamp like this next to him, it is generally there almost every yogi who is into certain kind of process will have a lamp burning next to him, an oil lamp. So, he dipped his finger into the oil and put it into the dead boy's mouth. And the boy came alive after some time and became perfectly all right. <laughs>